you're seeing cities and people try to figure out how they can get to where they want to go faster. And I think that the startup community, the tech community, is able to provide those answers in real time. A decade ago, Uber changed the way we move around. Now hundreds of startups are popping up every year, trying to revolutionize the way we think about mobility. So it's no surprise that about a dozen of these businesses made it onto LinkedIn's top startups list, a ranking of young companies that are growing fast and attracting talent in 2019. Rapid change in modes, the rapid change in services, the technology that's being applied to this, this is unprecedented. And that's why people are throwing money at transportation. In fact, in the last 12 months, mobility startups have raised more than $6 billion in funding and have hired almost 5,000 employees across the U.S. And that's not including the almost 1,400 jobs these companies are trying to fill. 30 years ago, we found that the best and the brightest were going into moving money around. And about 20 years ago, it was about moving information around. And today, it's about moving people and goods around. So what's happening here? Why would talent flee their jobs at big tech firms for these small mobility startups? Click a button on a request a ride, like we're doing right now. Now, the vehicle would be summoned. You have like the wait time, in this case, less than a minute. All right, so I'm gonna have to stand back here and see the car pull up. Cool. <laughs> so. So this is the way the car actually sees the world. Where startups really excel is to really find the part of the problem that uh, is meaningful to solve because you can really fail fast, uh, succeed fast, and uh, move forward with something that is uh, really great. Davi De Bichette was working on autonomous operations at Tesla and Apple, but he now works at Voyage, a company helping senior citizens find a way to move around their retirement communities using driverless cars. What about when the rain starts? Will the windshield wipers go on by itself? We are not trying to solve like the generalized full autonomy problem like other companies are trying to do. If we can focus on a very specific market, if we can focus on a very specific need of people, we can go to the road, we can deliver much sooner. There is a car. You see, we detected the car uh, during the intersection, uh, and the car was already in the intersection, so the vehicle reacted and uh, recreated a, 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 a new plan to take into account the interaction with that specific car. There is a lot of bleeding edge technology. I, uh, this is like my, my playground. The changes that we have seen this decade are more than we've seen in a hundred years. And it starts with the car share services, to the bike share services, to e-bikes, to scooters. And for the people who have to maintain traffic systems, the government, this is a pretty tough time to handle it. Mobility companies have to work with laws that are constantly changing. And that's opened up a new set of jobs for workers beyond engineers. Really what it depends on is if it's even legal yet, sometimes. How are you? It's not too bad. Phil Jones runs East Coast Government Relations at scooter startup Lime. Part of his job is to get this new type of vehicle into cities, and that means working with local, city, and state officials. As you can see, we're standing in front of a bus stop. So people are getting off the bus, hopping on a scooter, and taking them to their next location where they may not have a transit option. Having the ability to show people the difference between what an immediate transportation solution can give them versus doing a study for two to three years, versus then voting on that study to actually see if it's viable. That's something that can help change the way people view their city immediately. So we're building out policy and show them how this can work for them. One of the things that we partnered with the city on is that they were worried about safety on the waterfront. So we actually made a slowdown zone where the scooter actually goes below the speed limit that it does in any other part of the city. The race to solve mobility issues comes with lots of scrutiny and a very small window for mistakes. In order to successfully transform the way we move people and goods, these startups have to depend on a society that many times isn't ready for change. We're talking to people about a new technology they've never seen before. There are a lot of people with mobility problems, and uh, for them, having the possibility to go everywhere at every moment uh, without depending on anybody is actually a, 
a very significant improvement in their lifestyle.